I've been working on this project for eight months. Greek life, fraternities, sororities. These are names that if you live in the United States, you're very familiar with. Greek life was initially founded in 1776. And surprisingly, it was a reaction to students thinking they weren't being taught the right things. So students used to meet in secret and explore more education, which is funny because today fraternities are known for parties. But I wanted to get to the bottom of this. I go to one of the biggest universities in America and there is lots of Greek life here. The plan, simple. I was going to meet up with every single fraternity on campus, compare every single interview I had with them, and then rank them. And the hope is that these interviews allow myself and all of you watching to learn a thing or two about Greek life, fraternities, and university as a whole. I scheduled my first two interviews back in October of last year. What would you say the best part about your organization is? I could be open to myself with anyone. Um, that's kind of hard to find. So that's like one thing that's really good. We are in uh, Sigma Phi Epsilon. Okay. Short, we keep the abbreviation for Sig Ep. Sig Ep, yeah. So what happened to the, the Phi? I mean, we just, we just like to keep it short. Do you guys like talk about your feelings? Uh, like at night, we get together. Group. Okay, you see? <laughs> now, like, now it's turning weird. <laughs> Don't, I know, but he's like kind of like getting it out of me, huh? <laughs> As a fraternity, we don't do a pledge process or hazing. It's mostly just if you want to prove yourself, it's through recruitment, physical health and wellness, leadership, and professionalism. So you mentioned physical development. So I'll take it you guys are like pretty strong. Uh, when you guys like try to open this pickle jar for me, <laughs> I think I could. Um, maybe. You got it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Am I able to like use cloth? Oh yeah, no, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it must yeah, be glued no, or no something, chance. dude. No shot. No <laughs> Do you think maybe there's a chance you guys just aren't as like physically developed as you think? I, I guess not. I guess I'm like I guess I got some reflecting to do. I'll say that. <laughs> that was right. no, it is super glued. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think can do the most push-ups amongst you guys? Do you think you can beat me in a race? You think so? You're gonna run in a suit? I'll run in a suit. <laughs> Do you want to race? Yeah, I would need to be a Okay. <laughs> these interviews were super fun. I love these guys, but this isn't a video about me being a goofball and doing a bunch of silly interviews. This is a video about how I broke into all these fraternities. At this point, I came across some obstacles. I'd been DMing fraternities, emailing them, and I just couldn't get any responses. At this point, I was ready to pretty much scrap this entire video. Just as I was about to call it quits, I found an angel. What's up guys, I'm James, and my main purpose is to make sure that this video actually happens. So since joining this project, I have brought clear order. I have given Anthony a list of objective criteria, and I have used my extensive networking skills in order to get some interviews. And with eight entire interviews scheduled, we were ready to get rocking. So we were five minutes away from going to interview Delta Chi, and they literally texted us, again, five minutes beforehand. They said, guys, sorry to do this so sudden, but we can't go through with this interview. All media related stuff has to be cleared with HQ. And they didn't give the all clear to follow through with this yet. Literally also at the exact same minute, I got a text from Lay and she said, frat presidents were advised to not speak with any media outlet, including YouTubers after the Theta Chi case. God damn it. Fuck. Fuck. The frats ruined it. This is a heist. <laughs> This is not a documentary anymore. They did this. <laughs> to every frat brother watching, you did this. You did this. You did this. And after this blunder, every single other fraternity we had scheduled also canceled. Obviously this didn't work. And so our question was, why was this happening? The university sent out a mass email to all the presidents saying, do not take any interviews. The reason why they did this was because news organizations are flocking to Rutgers because of a case that happened last semester. We weren't gonna cover that in this video, but now we are. You see, last semester at this very house, according to ABC eyewitness accounts and even people that I've met on campus, these guys nearly killed a kid. Uh, he was drunk and he fell down the stairs and he was put in the hospital. And uh, there's no news on what happened to him, but for those of you who are unfamiliar with American fraternities, this isn't that uncommon. So sorry to kill the mood, but it needs to be said. Hazing, binge drinking, bad things like this run parallel to a lot of fraternities. 
But you've seen the length of this video and you realize that the video isn't over yet, is it? If there's one thing James and I aren't, it's quitters. And because of that, we wanted to rank the fraternities on a much more objective oh. standpoint. So our plan was simple. First, we were gonna infiltrate the frat houses by any means necessary. Next, we were gonna swab their dirtiest places, meaning their basements or their bathrooms. After, we were gonna culture them on a petri dish, and then we were gonna rank the frats and determine which fraternity is the dirtiest. So you're probably wondering, Anthony, there's like over 15 frat houses. How on earth did you get into them? There's a couple methods I used. The first one was I had Colin dress up like an electrician. How's it going, man? Uh, we're just doing uh, citywide inspections for the uh, circuit breakers. Uh, we need to make sure that there's just not a fire hazard, and it's been the kitchens and the Next, I had my friend Hanbon just walk in. Today, I'm gonna use this cotton swab to swipe that fraternity. <laughs> so stupid. Can I choose your bathroom really quickly? This is like the closest place. Like, I'm For some of the frats, I pretended to be blind so I could walk up and swab their party benches. But the main way that we managed to swab all these fraternities was using what they're known best for parties. James and I are boys. We cannot get into frat parties. But do you know who can? Girls. We've politely asked these fine ladies to go to a frat party and swab their bathroom in exchange for a compensation of $10. And this worked like crazy. We kept getting Petri dish after Petri dish after Petri dish. All said and done, we had over a dozen fraternities to compare and contrast, as well as a couple control groups like Alpha Sigma Sigma, which is my basement. I don't know anything about microbacteria, but I do. We also called upon other microbacterial experts to give us their professional opinions. This is Lomani. She is the microbacterial expert that I met in choir. Hi, I'm Lomani. Hi, I'm Lomani. <laughs> we handed out flyers to people on campus, and they also helped us make our tier list. See which fraternity is the dirtiest on campus. <laughs> Share this with your loved ones, your roommates. Really? This one to get like an award or something. Yeah, right. All right, this is pretty bad. It's not the worst. I might give it the B. The black oh. fungus. That's what I've been saying since day one. Yeah. I've been saying that since day one. I've been saying that. He told me that. As soon as he saw he's like, yo, the Asperger's of Niger, Niger, watch out. Yeah, thoughts. None of my Lomani had helped us objectively rank which fraternities were the cleanest and which were the dirtiest. And yes, my basement did land in the bottom of F tier, but that doesn't mean the other fraternities aren't dirty. It just means that my basement is very dirty. I had also taken my findings to my school's subreddit, and not to flex or anything, but I now do have the most upvoted post on my entire school subreddit, so f you guys. All said and done, after we did all these shenanigans, we actually had two people in fraternities willing to sit down and talk with us. I have a student from Phi Delta Epsilon. I have a student from Delta Sigma Pi. Why don't you take a seat? Take a seat, James. Anthony. <laughs> so yeah, we're both in fraternities. Yeah, we have been this whole time. Mm -hmm. But we're in professional fraternities, which is a little bit different. Like, they're both co-ed, so it's a little bit less, like, douchey, I, I guess. I'm in the pre-medical frat, and Anthony here is in the business frat. So sorry for deceiving you guys this whole time, but now I guess we can provide some real context. So I'm not gonna sit here and bullshit you. Like, my fraternity has given me my fair share of bad experiences, but there's no two fraternity experiences that are exactly the same. And I think if I were to ask myself, do I regret joining a fraternity? Uh, not at all. Uh, my YouTube banner right now, most of the people that are on that banner are in my fraternity. A lot of my most fond college memories are with the people in that fraternity. And overall, I think it's given me a group of friends that I wouldn't have had otherwise. So, yeah, it's been a good time for me. There's so many people in college and everyone's looking to make a group of friends. So you might not make the friends that you've expected to in a frat. You can meet them elsewhere. And I wouldn't feel bad about that if you don't, if you choose not to join a frat. I don't think that's a bad thing at all. They're not for everybody. So yeah, we spent this entire video pretty much shitting on frats the whole time, but we're both in frats. So I guess a uh, lesson to be learned, not everything is black and white, right? There's good fraternities, there's bad fraternities. The best advice I could offer all of you is to look in yourself and figure out what makes you you and don't let anybody challenge that or take that away. If you're not a person that likes to drink and smoke, uh, don't go to a fraternity where that is a pillar of what they do, right? Again, frats aren't for everyone. Yeah, frats aren't for everybody, I would say that. Just because you rush a frat and it's like not a good fit for you, I wouldn't feel bad about that at all. You can meet people elsewhere, like in your classes or extracurriculars or clubs, sports, and those are all like perfectly viable ways to meet these people and 
make these like core memories to last a lifetime. But no, yeah, L plus, where's your L plus? You got no girls. <laughs> uh.